Hey y'all. So today we are looking at Gaussian splats, how to implement them into Unity and get a 3D scan from your iPhone onto your desktop in an interactive scene with actually very few steps. So let's dive into it. The first thing that I want to cover, and this is not going to be a video on what are Gaussian splats, that's a much longer conversation, but at a very high level, um, here's a comparison between a geometry and a Gaussian splat on Scanna versus website. So here's the geometry. You can see a lot of fragmented geometric pieces, triangles. That's the splat. So you see a lot more of the environment. The idea is that with the splat, you get a lot more context. You don't have the overhead of all the extra modeled out environment. Um, as you can see here, the geometric model just doesn't make sense to have modeled out all of the stuff around it. And everything you can see here surrounding is just a quick scan with something like a phone. So in my example, I'm going to be using an iPhone today. A very quick, and I, I promise I'm not going up into this stuff, and we're just staying down here in the visual, a very quick visual of how to think about Gaussian splatting versus something like Nerf or just other types of 3D scanning technology is generally to think in blobs. So you kind of have these blobs of color that you're seeing through and having rays cast through to understand what's happening. Uh, you do have a few controls within Unity that we can take a look at later on if it's if it's relevant. Um, but more or less, once you get the splat into Unity, you have that representation of the scan. So as I mentioned, I'll be using my iPhone. I'm actually on a really old iPhone, an iPhone 11. And uh, I've gone out and scanned an area of our living room that's kind of Christmas themed. So it's got our Christmas tree, some of our stockings, a piano with some cool stuff on top of it, all that good stuff. And I just thought it would be a fun scan to show in Unity for the holiday season. To come down here, the main thing that I'm doing inside of the app is I've downloaded the Scanaverse app. I've gone ahead and hit scan. I've walked around and followed the prompts as how to make a scan. And then at the end, I don't really want to post it to a map or have it public anywhere. So I just hit save. And then I can open that up from my library in the app and hit export model. Once you've hit export model, you can either do an SPZ or a PLY. As of right now, a PLY is the, the way to go. So you'll hit export model PLY, and then I just shared mine out as a PLY to my Google Drive, which is how I got it onto this computer that we're gonna demo here today. Um, last thing here is that the PLY is kind of the stopgap right now, and the, the GitHub that we're gonna be using to me is also kind of a stopgap. There is apparently an SPZ importer that's coming for Unity that has a lot more robust support. Um, so here's a video that kind of shows off some of what that's starting to look like. But as of today, as far as I know, this is not out and available. So what we are going to do is use this Gaussian splatting GitHub repository, and we'll go ahead and dive right in. So without making this a tutorial on how to get GitHub repositories local, I'm just going to click on code, copy this HTTPS, come down to the folder where I want to be implementing this, which I've just named documents and then splats. Missed T there, I think it's S-P-L-A-T-T-S. So I'll right click, I'll open up terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and do a git clone, paste that repo in. And now you can see it's cloning, cloning, and done. So now that that's done, if I come back into here and I look at this, there's now a folder called Unity Gaussian Splatting. I now have docs, packages, projects, etc. If I go into projects, I can see that there's a standard example, and then we actually have an HDRP, so high definition render pipeline, and a URP, a universal render pipeline, edition of the project. So now what I can do is open up my Unity Hub, and I can add project from disk. Now I wanna come over here and go into projects under splats, Unity Gaussian splatting. And I'm gonna come down two levels into the HDRP project. And I'm gonna add that project. I'm gonna go ahead and change it from 22.3.47F1 to just the most recent version of Unity 6, because why not? And we'll go ahead and let that conversion happen. I'm gonna hit continue on this prompt or this error that's popping up. 
And essentially what we should get is once this project opens, we're going to see a tool button up at the top of the Unity Editor window where we'll be able to point to our PLY file. So you can go through here and see all the documentation while this is opening up. And uh, there are a few write-ups. I think there are even a few samples that you can look at. And over here, we have Unity opening. So I'll cut to when this is fully open. Hopefully won't be more than another 45 seconds. And I'll see y'all in the project. All right, so this has just opened. Uh, two things to know that it's it's loaded properly is that I have this GS test scene scene here. You can see that it's opened up just into the default untitled with a main camera and a directional light. So the first thing I want to do is just open up this scene, which has a game object here in the hierarchy for a Gaussian splat. So this is where we're going to associate the splat that we we uh, ingest here. And the way that we import that splat is going up to tools, Gaussian splats, and then create Gaussian splat asset. From here, you're going to navigate to your .ply file that you've exported from the Scanaverse app. Um, just as a, a mention or call out to the Scanaverse app, as far as I can tell, it's entirely free. I've found no need to pay anything. There's no subscription. There's no cost per model. So hopefully it stays that way because I found it super easy to use. So here I'm just indicating the PLY that I want. We have the output folder, which is going to be in here. We have the quality, which will be very high is what I want to set mine to. And I'm going to go ahead and hit create asset. So once you hit create asset, it's going to pull a few things in here. And you can go ahead and go into the Gaussian splats here drag it in, and immediately get something that looks kind of exceptional. So let's see. I just want to make sure that it looks right for the camera. So in here, uh, this is uh, pretty damn cool. All right, I'm going to turn off my gizmos. Let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger so that you can really see what this looks like. So I can now come into here and look at what we have. So this is the mantle over above the fireplace with the little Christmas village that we have up top. Here's some uh, little sticker sheet candy shop gingerbread houses that my kids made. It actually did pick up the image on our frame TV, uh, which is kind of interesting. I didn't know how it would handle a semi-reflective surface. And it actually got these pretty well scanned. I'm pretty damn impressed. So this was about five minutes that I spent in our living room. You can see our uh, bin of toys that is overflowing. And here's the piano that we have. There's the mirror. So you can see some sort of reflection of myself in that, which is interesting. Some golden nutcrackers that I... Uh, Spray painted black, and my wife just painted gold yesterday. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer sheet music, a needlepoint of a Jeep, and then the Christmas tree with the little star on top. So you can see there's definitely some uh, quality that could be derived that I did not get out of this. Could be user error. Uh, could just be a limitation of this technology. Um, so a lot of the the limitation that I see with Gaussian splatting right now is specifically that it is being leveraged by something like an iPhone, whereas it's comparing against uh, more robust with larger history scanning technologies that have giant camera rigs that are dedicated to them getting the best quality out. So if you're trying to scan a super large environment, this doesn't quite cut it. Um, so you have to kind of figure out what you want to use. But for a simple scan that took not much time at all, um, this is pretty great. So now that we're in here and we can start to look around, here are some of the sliding scales that we have. So I can decrease how big the splats are and you can start to understand kind of how those blobs work. Take that back to one. Have our opacity. Opacity. 
and a few other things. I think when I was researching this, this is like the amount of colors that are supported within each blob. So you can see in here, if I turn off the light, this doesn't really react like a normal 3D scene because it's really not a 3D uh, object. It's not tessellated geometry right now in this format. Um, there are some ways that you could discuss getting it into that format, but then you'd have some limitations that come with that as well. Um, but when you look at this Gaussian splat object, it's over here just referring to an asset. That asset then has some other things here that it's referring to for things like position and color. Um, so getting in here and adding anything like a um, like a, a different type of color effect on the directional light might be a little bit difficult. You can also get in here and change out the render mode to start debugging and seeing what points have been created. Wow. This is pretty damn cool. So I'll keep this up online. And once a new tutorial can come out with a new way of importing Gaussian splats, I'll be sure to post it and link to it. But for the time being, this is the way to get it done. We accomplished this in about 10 minutes. And as I mentioned, I probably spent 10 minutes in total downloading the Scanniverse app, creating my first scan, which was a little tabletop figure that I had just to see how it works. And then walked out into the living room and did a scan out here of the tree, the piano, and some of our mantle village over here. So you can start to imagine what types of effects and immersion you could accomplish with very minimal effort. If you implement something like a VR camera rig into here and have someone in a headset looking around, uh, it really creates a nice picture in time of the environment. So if you have any questions, let me know. I hope this was helpful, and I look forward to seeing what you all have that you can scan, take into Unity, and start interacting with. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.